Welcome back to Grit Gym. I'm Adam Reese, and if you're, we're going to talk about core training today and how the squat and the deadlift are actually core lifts, but also how we integrate all the other stuff into the workout. And if you're more interested in learning about how this applies to you, go to gritgym.com slash ss, gritgym.com slash ss, and get signed up for your own strategy session, because then we'll be able to tell you what, what's, what's probably best for you and where you should start. Because a uh, 65-year-old, never worked out before, might start out with a bird dog, type exercise, whereas a 26 year old might be able to hop right into a deadlift with a trap bar. So to show trap deadlift with a trap bar real quick, can you come down here? So we would get inside, feet to six, eight, eight inches apart, brace up to the trunk like a ninja is about to punch you in the gut, and then we would sit back with the hips, forearms should be right beside the knees, and we would push the ground down, not thinking about, uh, about picking the weight up. Now can you come over here? And, and uh, the reason this is a core exercise is because we're using the trunk to stabilize. We have to create super stiffness through the trunk by bracing out, by pushing out into the gut, gripping tight, and picking up that weight. Now, I want to make 135 pounds look really, really hard because that's, what, uh, like, that's when you know you've got a high threshold going on at your trunk. Now, do I need to make it look that hard? No, but dramatic effect, all that stuff. I want you to hammer down on your trunk as hard as you can before you deadlift. Okay, that's why, why are you making that face? <laughs> that's why, um, that, that's, that's what you need to do when you deadlift. You need to brace up here, create the super stiffness so that your back is safe, so that you're using your butt, using your hamstrings and driving that ground down and picking up the weight. So it's a great exercise for a lot of people. Some people it's not right for. If you don't tolerate sheer stress at your spine, you're not gonna be able to do deadlifts. If you have a shoulder that sits really low and, and a lot of pain through the front of the shoulder, back of the arm, numbness in the fingertips, we're definitely not gonna do deadlifts. There's reasons for that, okay? And we might find that with you, I do not know. That's why everything has to be individualized to each person. That's why you wanna do the strategy session. So go to gritgym.com slash SS and get signed up there. But let's say that that's not the right exercise for you and there's some problems that are gonna be happening if we do pull that off. Like I said with the with the, uh, with the bird dog, can you wrap around here? I'll, I'll be able to show that. So with the bird dog, we might, grab, we, we, we might grab sliders and start you out here so that we would put these down on the ground, put one on each foot, get down into all fours, get nice and long through the spine, reach forward and back, opposite sides, switch sides, forward and back. Why might we do this? Well, we're getting some posterior chain and we might progress that to actually lifting that leg up off the ground Okay, we're building stability through our trunk. We're using our hip and our hamstring and everything else to coordinate to lift that leg, okay? It's the same hinge, okay? For me to go like this, it's the same hinge as for me to go like this, like with a deadlift, okay? That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to, uh, we have to start people where, uh, where is it, we have to start you where is appropriate. If we don't, you get hurt, we didn't do our jobs, okay? We have to do our jobs. That's why you have to sign up for a strategy session. Now, Beyond that, how much core training do you really need? Because it's not all squats and deadlifts. I mean, squats and deadlifts are great. They're a great trunk exercise. Brace up, come down, do your squat. Brace up, pick the bar up by pushing the feet down. It's a great exercise for the right person. For the right person. Okay, so what about, uh, what about all the other stuff? Okay, so we figured out that can be a regression. That bird dog can be a regression, pretty heavy regression, to a deadlift. What about all the other stuff? Because you need to up your ante on the core. Right? I know core training almost gets like cliche, uh, but, it, but it's really not. I, it's, um, well, it really is because everybody thought it was sit-ups, draw-in maneuvers, and all this other garbage that, that, that got perpetuated by mainstream fitness industry uh, type, type, type stuff. Um, jargon, that's what I was going for. But is that what you, really what you need? Right? We know we need to make this stiff because this is the center point. The stronger and more stiff this becomes, the more you can spring out of your leg, the more you can get out of your arms. Okay? You have to maintain position here. So the better we maintain position here, the better we get at all the other stuff. So we do need to be doing quite a bit of core training. Now, I would say you probably, if you pick the right exercises, each workout that you do, just to make it really simple, you do two different core exercises. But they have to be highly effective. Okay? I see some programs where people are putting in 10 to 20 minutes of core, core work per workout. Okay? That is insane. That's, that's just too much. If you're doing over four minutes of anything, you, and, and it's not your job, then you're doing too much of it. You need to make the exercise harder, not, not um, here, can you come over here so I can show? Uh, make the exercise harder, not make the exercise longer. All right, so I'm gonna show a chop. 
an upper chop, okay? So we're gonna grab the handles. We're gonna get one foot on the two by four. So this is one way that we'd make the exercise harder. We'd put a two by four on the ground, get nice and tall, squeeze butt, and then we'd pause at the hip, pause at the chest, reach across, pause, 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 pause. Really controlling that position, okay? If we wanted to make that easier, we might go down to two knees. If we wanted to make it harder, we could definitely pop up and make it a more dynamic exercise. We're sitting into the hip and coming up and through. Same exercise, different dynamic, okay? Different intensity, okay? Much more difficult, all right? So you have to pick the right exercise for you. Can you come over here? I'll show you a chop. So we have another one where we might go half kneeling, one knee down, and we're gonna drag that bar across, pushing the arm down with straight arms, okay? Now we might make this a little bit harder, pick that back knee up off the ground, drag down and across. Now I've got a little bit of a different component. I've only got two points of contact on the floor, okay? Before I had three, I had the knee, the back of the foot, and the front leg, okay, I had three. All of a sudden I pick up my knee, now I've only got both feet on the ground. Totally different scenario, okay? Go ahead and come on over here. We could even do a payload press, and most of these that I'm showing so far are all anti-rotary type exercises, but I guarantee, like, the majority of the people that we have done testing on are low in rotary stability, okay? And you can sign up for a program design session uh, if you want, you just go to gritgym.com slash PDS, and I almost guarantee you, you're, you're, you're low in rotary stability, so we want to do some of these exercises. So for a payoff press, we put the inside knee down, brace, reach, come back. What if we wanted to make that a lot harder? Well, we could come out real wide, brace, come back, brace, come back. These are just a few exercises that we can do. We can also come over here, and these are much better than sit-ups, drawing maneuvers, planks, because uh, they're dynamic in nature. They're, 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 they're mimicking how we move, okay? And they're, they're creating stiffness in all the different vectors that our core is gonna to have to encounter, okay? So we don't just wanna sit here and do planks, okay? This is like not uh, really that it's not effective, it's great, but we can do other things, okay? Like if you're doing a push-up, you're doing a plank, okay? If you're, uh, and, and we wanna make that a little bit harder. So one of the things that we can do, we can grab a kettlebell, we can put it up underneath our chin, you can do this with a dumbbell too, and we can walk, okay? We're just taking one step, two step, three step, four step, right? So every time that you shift one foot to the other, side to side, you're shifting that weight to be able to take that step. This is having to renegotiate position with every single uh, subsequent step. Okay? It's really, really powerful for building a really strong trunk. And you wanna build this thing so that it's indestructible. You wanna make your spine so that nothing can hurt it. You want this to just be hard as a rock, but also able to maintain position, okay? So that if a band of ninjas pops out of the ceiling and kicks you in the stomach, you can hold up, right? That's what it's all about. All right, so if you're interested in learning more about how to train your trunk in individual, because everybody's just a little bit different, almost everybody needs some level of anti-rotation unless you have a lot of back problem. Almost everybody needs some kind of anti-lateral flexion, okay? So you don't want to do this one. That's a dumb exercise. That one where you use one dumbbell and you go like this. But we do want to get some kind of anti-lateral flexion. This is not meant to create movement. The trunk, this is the, this is the greatest lie that the fitness industry has perpetuated, that this produces movement. Your arms produce movement, okay, when you're running. Your legs and your hips produce movement when you're running. This resists the movement, okay? The better it resists the movement, the more effect you can get out of your arms and the more effect you can get out of your legs. Uh, if we took the stiffness out of Usain Bolt's trunk, he would not be able to apply the force to the ground the way that he needs to, to be able to run as fast as he did uh, at, at Beijing. And uh, where did he actually break it? Or he, he busted everywhere, but anyway. Um, but in order to know what to do, we needed to be able to sit down with you as an individual. So go to gritteam.com slash SS, and we'll get that figured out. Uh, but it's not, the point of this video is that it's not all deadlifts and squats. It's what a lot of people think. They think, oh, you're gonna do chin-ups, you're gonna do uh, curls, you're gonna do bench press, you're gonna do squats, you're gonna do deadlifts, and you're gonna do lunges, and that's basically it. And then past that, you're just gonna try to uh, make it as fun as possible. Yes, we're gonna try to make it as fun as possible, uh, but we're not gonna do that with the exercises, okay? We're going to use exercises that, uh, that uh, complement the movement patterns that you already have. You, you know, they're like, we wanna make the movement patterns better. If you focus on strength first and movement quality second, you're gonna get neither, okay? But if you fo focus on movement quality first, 
and strength second, you're going you're, you're gonna to get both. Okay? So we want to focus on movement quality first, not the amount of weight that you're actually using. Okay? And I'm not just talking about good technique there. I'm talking about giving you the exact exercise. I'm talking about doing a bird dog and you're trying to move your hip that far and you're breaking into a sweat because it takes that much mental workout just to get that thing to fire and do what it's supposed to do. So is it all about the core? Yes. Is it all about the core? No. There's a lot more involved here. Um, is the deadlift an excellent core exercise? Yes, it should be considered a core exercise. Um, but at the same time, like the core isn't just, the, I, the, I, I, I should have done this at the beginning of the video. So I separate the core from the trunk. So this is my trunk, okay? This is my trunk, okay? This is what I call my trunk. My, my, uh, my core is anything that affects my pelvis. And if it's anything that affects my pelvis, then we're including hamstrings, glutes, hip flexors. I mean, we're talking everything down below my knee. All right, and if we're saying anything that affects the pelvis, well, now we're gonna get up into like other things in the back and all that, obviously. But the pelvis is the, uh, or the shoulder blade is the pelvis of the upper body. The shoulder blade is the pelvis. It's just snapped in half and, and put out here. Okay, so they're the same, the same thing. So if you're gonna say anything that affects the pelvis, now you've gotta say anything that affects the shoulder blade. Okay, well, the shoulder blade is affected by the serratus anterior, rotator cuff, uh, even your part of your, one of your biceps. Uh, like there's a lot of different things that are attaching back to that shoulder blade and manipulating its movement. So basically you're talking everything from your elbows down to your knees uh, is very easy, is a, there's a very easy case to be made for why that is your core. So we've got to look at this thing as a very comprehensive uh, deal when we're, when we're in the training medium. Right? And it gets, it gets pretty complicated, but at the same time, we've got systems out at Grit Gym so that we know how to progress you along and where to start you. And to figure out those, you go to gridgym.com slash SS, get signed up for a strategy session, and then we can go to town on uh, what's going to work best for you, where is appropriate to start, and we're gonna make a plan. So like six months from now, we have a target that we know that we need to hit, okay? So we need to know what we're doing now, we need to know where you are right now, make a plan so that we can hit that target out there. So to get signed up for one of those, go to gridgym.com slash SS, and it's free, it's one-on-one, -on -one, it's with me, and, and we'll do more of that. But there's all kinds of things that you can do for your trunk. Most of the stuff that the fitness industry perpetuates is going to hurt your low back. Do not let this happen. You wanna get a big brace for all your deadlifts and your cores, high threshold type stuff. You don't want that high threshold for something like a, like a bicep curl. But we don't really do a lot of uh, like bicep curl type stuff. I think people have kind of an odd idea of what powerlifting really is, but, or, or what movement quality really is. But anyway, go to gritgym.com slash SS and get signed up.